I'm in Leeds to speak with former two-time world champion Josh Warrington ahead of his upcoming fight against Lee Wood. Rather than dissecting the X's and O's of this domestic clash, I wanted to get an insight into the mindset and motivations behind the warrior and how the lessons from his life can be applied to anyone looking to do hard things. I want to ask about your approach and opinion on hard work because I've seen you now in two training camps. The last one, I saw the cardio circuit and I saw the, the pad work in this one, a different kind of training. Every single session you seem to take with the same sort of stoic, uh, hard faced, determined approach. What is your opinion and your views on hard work? I'm going to go a long way around with this answer. So, in hard work, it's pushing the body and uh, the mind to, to its limits. Um, it's not going through the motions, it's not just taking it steady, it's pushing, pushing, pushing. Um, in a sport like boxing, where there's just yourself to rely on, you know, you have factors like your corner man and your and the crowd and stuff like people supporting you but physically inside the ring there's just you and if you are not put the hard work in if you don't push yourself to a certain level of fitness if you want not push yourself to a certain uh, uncomfortable situation then you're going to struggle and the sport of boxing when very competitive and your your man in the opposite corner is going out to work you and you get into later stages of fights and it comes to you know how bad do you want it it all comes down to sessions like today sessions like when you've seen before and doing the cardio stuff being able to push yourself when you are in an uncomfortable position when your arms are feeling tired when your legs are aching, you might walk into the sessions half asleep, you might have had a bad week, you might have had a, 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 shat, a shite night's sleep, night before, whatever, but being used to being uncomfortable. And, uh, and every time I come in, I try to push myself to the very limit um, because that's the only reason you, oh, that's the only way, sorry, you progress is by, uh, by pushing and pushing and pushing. In a sport like football, for example, you might draw a match and you might have played really well or you might even lose the match as a striker and sc still scored a couple of goals. Boxing is very black and white. Once you've put in so much hard work and dedication and the result doesn't get your way, where does your mind go to, to actually push through and be like, no, we go again? I think that's coming, coming away from the fight and on analysing where it went wrong on the night because what you just said there, you know, footballers have week in, week out and uh, yeah, they can perform one day, score a couple of goals and play rubbish but score a few goals. We get that, that one night and that's where I just peaking for that, that one night. Um, so you can evaluate the old camp. Well, you compare that to other camps. Well, that one went well, that went well, that went well. What went wrong on the actual night? Was it a factor of camps? Could we have done things different? Um, did it just come down to the fight? Um, were there any mental issues? So there's all these different kind of factors. Um, and if, if there were any factors, what you could have done better in camp, then well, you make sure you eradicate the bad ones, make sure you, you change um, and have, have, have better factors in there. Could the game plan have been better? Well, you might go and analyse that. We could have worked on this, could have worked on that. Um, but that's, that, that's it really. A lot of times, majority of fighters, camps go well. Fighters will be happy with the camp, they'll give absolutely everything. And it just comes down to the night a lot of times, you know, how we keep that composure together, how we keep that mindset together. Um, but once it more, you know, who's trained a little bit harder 
and that might be something that you carry on you try to um push yourself but you can't just do it over one camp you know someone who's been fucking killing themselves for years and years and years and always going to see a better trajectory than someone who's only just fucking started training hard now say like talent's taking you taking you to a certain level and it's taking you to a tire level and you've been able to get through just winging it in training and you're coming up now against someone who's a fucking not really that talented but just grafted 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 fought had a week off grafted 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 fought you can know fucking coming in against different kind of events this you know and when you get into them later stages of fight and they start pulling away you know they can still keep to the game plan and you struggle well that's uh you can't just put that in in, in one session it's what comes from years and years and years uh, years of training and and, and and fucking that original thing the hard work so the answer to your, to your question is sometimes it you've got to evaluate really what you know coming off a loss but for myself personally I look at my last fight and think I, 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 I probably could have got that decision but I want fucking um, happy with my performance but that wasn't nothing down to anything that would happen in camp because I was fit I was fit I was strong I trained hard for it it was more mental and I know I'd trained hard for it because when my fucking mental woke, and, woke up and I got the demons at my head what were bothering me for the first four or five rounds it was me who finished the strongest now I felt there'd been other way around I started fast and, and finished weak then I say, well, fucking hell, there's a lot of went wrong in my camp. But I was the man who was pushing. I was the man who was, you know, forcing the fight. He would look at survive, you know, in 11th, holding on for dear life in 12th. So, but I was just still pushing for the fight. So, you know, like, I evaluating that situation. You know, I know that it were mental demons for me, no, nothing to do with the camp. Talking about the, the mental side of the game, obviously you've got a, a fan base of a lot of young men, a lot of adults who in their own lives will deal with setbacks and things like that. For people who just go through setbacks in their life, for someone who's experienced setbacks, I'm sure in your personal professional life, what advice do you have to them for getting over those kind of setbacks? You know, it's, it's funny because for, for a long time, fucking, I've only got to 30 fights on meeting, you know, no number one in the world and you think outside looking in I oh, just just had it rosy oh it's all right for him you know unbeaten fighter but no one's ever given me it you know I've had to work for every single thing that I've that I've achieved and um, that's from everything from getting a fan base behind me getting support behind me winning the fights putting the ad graft in people won't have seen things like driving home from training black eyes bush lips doubting yourself even prior to turning pro as an amateur lad you know going on from sessions crying I mean that's my, my trainer and that's been for a long time having arguments at home you know what you really want to do is Josh do you don't want to do anything else but you want to pack it in you know Work pals or pals that we go to school with, ah, you know, like a little boxing there, yeah. you know, he's fucking, it's knocking down, and you've got to show resilience, you've got to show that you can do it, you can do it, and don't get me wrong, there are times when you think, ah, fucking hell, if you listen to these critics, you listen to these people, you listen to some, to, listen to some of your, your mates, some of your mates' dads, are, you're alright, Josh, but how far are you going to go, you know? If, did listen to them then where would we we've gone might have just might not have ever achieved what i've achieved but it's a case of just believing in yourself knowing what you are capable of doing and and just push yourself a little bit more each day just push yourself a little bit more and if things don't go your way then fucking hell, what went wrong learn from it and you know things are always rosy things take time people want instant results in this day and age they want to go to the gym after a week and be walking around fucking massive and have a big six pack and stuff and it just doesn't happen like that things take time 
the things take a long time um, and some finer things in life you could be looking at years but if you are on a trajectory and you've got a dream and you've got a mission in your head then if you want it bad enough you don't matter how long it'll take you'll work towards it and yeah you might get rejection you might get knocked back um, but you keep going and fucking eventually cream will rise and it fucking you want it bad enough you'll get there I only, it's funny I only watched a, an interview last night with uh, on Instagram with Seth Rogen Seth Rogen of all people and he was talking about um, the, the guy who plays uh, Gandalf the Grey and fucking Ian yeah Ian McKellen a lot of the rings and like I say he was 60 before he got his first fucking big role 60 no one knew him but no he was before that and then the next minute he's landed a role in X-Men and then after that he's known all over the world and then he's in he's in Lord of the Rings and it's like that's a man who didn't give up on a dream and like, I, that inspired me there you know find inspiration all the time but say if everyone if I listen to people say oh, even at times listen to my own doubts if I listen to them they're like 11 year old I've never been a world champion but you just gotta keep on pushing and uh, like I say if you want it bad enough you know if, if you want that there's some things you fucking you know might not get you have to change your, you know change your position and change your outlook on on, on certain things but certain goals if you want it bad enough you'll get there what does that internal dialogue look like then because you mentioned self-doubts how do you not let the self-doubt be stronger than the self-belief well it's a it's like a bit of a balancing act right you have a bit of scale what do you want to do i want to be a champion boxer right so what we're gonna do you've got to win you're gonna train hard and uh you've got to fucking fight hard you've got to believe in yourself then on the opposite scale opponents or opponents training hard doubters self-doubt people said you can't you just got to wait up you know you go into training sessions sparring sessions fucking hell double nard sparring session um, how can I be better right I need to do this I need to do that right that's the that's the boxing attributes work on you work hard you train hard you push yourself to the max and you start seeing results and you, you're working alongside other fighters in the gym and you want to be better than them that's the in, in driven thing to, to be the best if we can make ourselves the best here then you know we're pushing ourselves to the limits these guys are all at a decent, a decent level push past them you build like a a strong mindset and that like carries over into what you all arm boxing then and then all of a sudden these outside kind of influences start coming in oh, you know it starts like on this starts like on that but that's where you've got to and it's not always easy because you, especially the kind of person you are, you, it's easy to fucking just hear them. You know, you, on, on social media these days, you can you can read comments, and you can so, so many good comments, and a bad one will stand out, and they'll like fucking be there in your face. And you know, a lot of times, I certainly react to them. Why do you react to them? Fucking thousands of lovely comments, and you react to that bad one. But it's like right. So in, in 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 my own head, it's all, I've always had that thing of turn that into motivation you say I can't I'm fucking sure that I can you know um, you say I won't fucking win this fight I'm going to show you I'm going to fucking destroy this guy and it's just proving wrong and people talk about an un underdog mentality I have an underdog mentality when I first fucking come into this world I was born with pneumonia on my lungs you know I fucking I was born premature and I was told, well my mum and dad were told by doctors wrap him in cotton wool and be delicate when he's older probably didn't expect me to get punched in the head for a living so I've always had that underdog mentality being a, being a small lad you know it is a fucking gun up in council state in Leeds not walking around with fancy clothes I always feel like I have to push a little bit harder than anyone, everyone else to just fucking kind of fit in 
so I've always had that fucking um, that underdog mentality, and it, and it still sits with me now. When I when I see people leaving at this stage, I can fucking carry it down me. Doubt what I've done. I'm a two-time world champion. I've won everything there is to winning in boxing. I fucking sold out arenas, sold out stadiums, and I've achieved some amazing feats. Leeds is first boxing world champion, male, but I still fucking find fire when people say that you, you can't do that. It's like, no, I'll dictate my life. I'll dictate if I fucking can't or not. I'll dictate when my career's done, not fucking you, you know? So it's just, some, some of it's like a bit of an inbuilt. I've always had that kind of wanting to prove people wrong when they say, say that you can't. And as a fellow guy from Leeds, I always feel as though we have, as a city, um, you've had that support, which is almost unique in, in the country. I know other people say, you might say Lee Wood's got Nottingham, but there's something about Josh Warrington and Leeds that all comes together. And I feel like having spent time with you in your camp, loyalty seems like a pretty important thing for you, a, a non-negotiable. What does loyalty mean to you and how important is it? Yeah, so it's massive, I think. In, uh, certainly again, you see boxing can be a bit of a pantomime, a bit of a circus and uh, you get a lot of uh, hangers on, clingers, you know, as soon as you get a bit of success because you are just one entity, you know, like a, a football team, you've got a team of 11 managers, coaches on behind the scene, whereas that, you know, that Josh Warren, and that's the thing. You know, but he's still a fucking person. But that's that's the that's the thing. Everyone just fucking latches onto that, and um, you've got to be careful because people can blow smoke up your ass. People can fucking bite your back, and sometimes it's just for their own gain. And sometimes people, you have people around you, and they, you know, they might have gain as well when whilst working with you. But you've got to you've got to be a judge of character and see. Always genuinely there to to help you as well as himself to help just you or to just to help themselves completely and um, you know over the years I've had especially when my rise first came through I mean I fucking I'm 10 years deep in this game why well, in terms of shows I mean 14 years of pro but 10 years when I've since I've been at learning shows and it's like all of a sudden everyone wants a piece here and I'm like, hello, 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 hello. And uh, it's only through trial and error that you see actually, not everyone's there to actually help you. They are genuinely fucking interested in you whatsoever. They just want to use your name. And uh, I've always had a, a pretty fucking small circle of, of, of close pals. <laughs> and it's, it's mad, I've got lots and lots of small circles in different areas. And it's not of like a fucking one big, like, I have lots and lots of small circles and that fucking has always been good because it's, you know, it's, um, you know, people come and go, fall off, but that small circle, you know, who we're you, you dealing with and, you know, it's, um, always, like I say, loyal and they said some of the people who have who've been with me for thick and thin, you know, from spending the money like, in terms of supporters, being there from Leisure centres when it's not shows that on telly and they have fucking no big name, you know. And they're fucking investing the time and they're investing the money to come and watch you and support you on the, on your journey. And it's selfish really because it's fucking it's my journey, but I'm saying come with me on my journey. And then you know what, I'll invest my time, I'll invest my money on your journey, Josh. I'll fucking do it with you. And that's what they're doing. And it's you know, they've been there, some of them been there from fucking day dot. I was watching back one of my old fights of the night, first fight at Leeds Arena, and then we were Wednesday night, it was an experiment with match room, 3,000 there, 3,000 fucking hardcore, and a lot of them, 3,000 still come to this day. Nearly 10 years deep, how much money they've spent over the years, how much fucking time that they can never get back, you know, supporting me, watching me, memories they've fucking, they've made. That's fucking loyalty, you know, I've had, and, I'll be forever indebted to that because you know you, you can't buy that. You know you can give out free tickets, but people don't have to come. People don't want to want it. You know I've met some people who become like family, and 
when we get into fight week, they get as fucking worked up as I do. They fucking want it as bad as, almost as bad as I want it, you know, it fucking means that much to him. I was speaking to one of my pals of the day, who, who I met through boxing, and he says, Josh, when I fucking, I've got a bit of a, bit of a bit of ritual what I do on fight day because, you know, I've always done it, and I go for a walk on fucking early in the morning, I walk my dogs and I get home and I do this and do that. And he's just one of many, and that's what it's become, it's fucking, and it means so much to me, but, um, that's fucking loyalty and the only way I've fucking been able to thank people for that loyalty is by meeting them face to face, shaking their hand and fucking welcoming in as, as much as I can, you know, and I've found that people who I've done that with, they've shown it so much back and any time I've fucking had a link where people had a bit their own personal gain, then, then I'll put it in reverse and I'll fucking put the guard up. Tell me about, we've spoken about the loyalty aspect of it, tell me about having people there to push you in camp because there's times like this you do it on your own and you will do it on your own but how important is it to have you a good network that will all push you towards the fight night? Um, I mean, I'm, I've, I've never really needed people to, to stand and push me because I believe that, as we said earlier, you've got to have that somewhere inside you, one who wants to push you. Sometimes I take myself to track running it's easier to quit, because who the fuck's going to see you? You can fucking say, oh, I've, I've done fucking eight laps today. I've done eight times 800 metres today. Uh, and if you've only done fucking six, I was going to argue, because no one's been there to see it. It's easy to fucking just, oh, did them at good pace, yeah, yeah, did you? I mean, you can fucking have data on your phone and stuff, or you watch and stuff like that. You see, it just toss it off and to get easy. When there's loads of people there watching you, you can't do it. You can't get away with it, can you? Yeah, they're there to support you, but if you're fucking not on it that day, well, they're gonna see you. And like, you could, it's easy to just toss it off when there's no one there. And that's when I like to go because I'm fucking gonna push myself harder than someone who is there because it's me versus me. So I will feel like it, it's, it's good for fucking my head, you know, when I'm there and I fucking push myself to the limit and I fucking am recovering and I'm counting down from 10 seconds, 9 seconds, I think <sighs> I could fucking just have another 5 seconds after that no fuck that, time go bam and it's kind of got as David Goggins would call it, callous mindset you know, I've, I've, before I read about his books and fucking his mindset that he's someone else who has some, similar to that and we can't argue you can you can sleep at night knowing that you fucking push yourself to the extreme limit and uh, and you don't have nobody patting you on the back or needing to push you or rev you up don't get me wrong that is fucking brilliant you know and when obviously on the night when you're walking out and you're seeing people's eyes and you meet someone's eyes and they're fucking with you come on josh then it fucking gives you another boost but if you can do it without one set comes in board, that's an extra little boost, so you just got to start with yourself first. David Goggins also talks about taking souls. Is imposing yourself mentally as well as physically on your opponents something that you think about? It's a good question. It's a good question. There's just, there's... There's moments when you're like, you can be in there, whether it be a clean shot, whether you're you might have an exchange of punches. I won't fucking be, I will be the first one to stop throwing. I will, I refuse. I fucking, my arms will keep on going. Just, and going back to what, if, what you first asked me, this is just fucking years and years and years of that kind of underdog. I won't never say die attitude, but it's fucking just carried on into training, into sparring for years and years and years, and it's just become, that accustomed to, to my body that just fucking don't give up and say I have to be dragged out fucking for me to stop when I got knocked out by Lara I fucking went down but I wanted to get up back up I wanted to continue when I fucking got he put me down on fourth fourth round in my first fight I won the fifth I still believed I was going to win the fight even fucking as the rounds went on I was taking every punishment clean as well, I was half concussed, fucking with a broken bone inside my fucking skull. I still believe I want to win. 
last year, kick on Martinez, broke my jaw. Fucking hell, this don't feel right. I'm not going to throw a towel in though. I'm fucking, I need to win. And that's that's just it. Telltale signs in the fight, it's not always clear. Um, but I, I have seen their emotions change previous previous opponents I've seen you know when when I've been there and I'm fucking I'm working and like notes coming back that's when you know that and you feel that you can go up again you've got another gears fucking in the back pocket waiting to go you, you know you're only fucking in third and they're stop they're still not going with you no more that's when it's like a little uh, it's a soul taken you know and uh that's when you know you're in the driving seat then. And it's I'm in fucking control now. I this is this is my game, you know. And whenever I fucking want to I'll put it into that fourth and I fucking I'll you know, take away with it. But um you know, a lot sometimes you know, some fighters can be like a poker first, but eventually over that twelve round distance you will get I will get to them eventually. And uh yeah. You'll just see a little, just see a little glint in their eyes. Like, fuck me, he's here again. He's still here. It's all coming. I won't be fucking denied. Not for fucking 36 minutes. Not for 36 minutes. And finally, how are you feeling for the 7th of October? 7th of October. I've never been so fucking confident and so certain of a fight. I were. At least I'll be with. Was that fight? I feel like destiny. Like just nothing was gonna stop me from fucking becoming a world champion on, on the nineteenth of May two thousand eighteen. And since that, you know, so I've had some fantastic nights and stuff, but this is kinda of like one of them scenarios again where there's no fucking way that I had to walk away three time world champion. It's just no else can happen. The fucking universe has too many fucking things to me and my head's in too much of a good place that there's nothing that Lee can do physically or mentally. It just won't be have enough. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very fucking confident that I'll become three time world champion on October 7th and the new.